What's up, everybody? This is Tree from treeoflogic.com. As you can see, I have a beautiful guest with me here today, Miss Lana Loktep. Did I say that right, Lana? Loktep. 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 I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> Loktep here with me today. And we have a lot of things to discuss. Um, she's going to educate me on a variety of topics, but I know what you guys want to give. We're going to give you a little taste of, um, of today, current news because I know you all want to know about, well, Tree, what do you think about what happened today uh, in Alexandria, Virginia? And Lana, as you heard, um, the left has gotten a little crazy. And I think all of the kill Trump, uh, the beating of the kill Trump rhetoric, the beating up of uh, Trump supporters, especially if they have the mega hat on, um, Antifa, uh, Black Lives Matter has been quiet since Trump has been in office, but they surfaced again and decided to attack the gay people in their own parade. So, you know, they're trying to come back. And uh, now one of the Bernie bros decided to take it upon himself to get an uh, AK-47 and get a confirmation uh, from a, uh, by, uh, let's see, I think either a bypasser or someone who was a spectator of watching the sports of the GOP to see if they are Republicans. So he's like, is this, is this, I think he said, is this Congress or, or is this the Senate? And they're like, yes. And he says, is this the Republicans? And once he got the conf confirmation that these were indeed Republicans, he began to open fire. Do you think we've gotten to the point where we're now officially at civil war with the left? Well, I mean, it's it's been that way for a long time. I think the, the left has been fighting the right for a very long time in this country, but things are now starting to become much more violent and open and in, in our face. Yes, as you know, it was a lefty open fired. Mm -hmm. It was at a baseball game. Mm -hmm. It was Republicans. Yeah. And the media doesn't want to talk about it because he is a leftist. And really, it is the media's fault because they're inciting hatred of Republicans telling everyone that they're the ultimate evil, and right. big, bad, evil Nazis and everything. So, of course, right. this guy goes there and open fires. Right. Right, right. And I think this is a time for all of us, the conservatives, everybody on the right, regardless of what category you put yourself in, this is a time for us to unite together. We need to come together and understand that they're coming after all of us. And I have to say from a member of the NRA, I am a member of the NRA. I am an advocate of Second Amendment. You guys know I love my guns. And I have to say from being with my friends uh, who are ex-military, uh, current and ex-police officers, uh, if the, the left wants a war, this is a war that will end quickly and they will lose because all of the advanced fighters are on our side. And I think to the, we, we have gotten to the point where we're just a little too patient with these crazy people. But I've, I've always advocated for... Uh, the conservatives and anybody on the right to protect themselves and stop taking the nice route. Uh, the left considers just like Islam, Islamists uh, consider nice as weakness. And when we don't get our, um, our, our people in office to start making, we don't really need any new laws. We just need to have the laws enforced. And I, I thought it was crazy that the, get this girlfriend, check this out. The governor of, of Virginia took this time when we have Republicans in the, and the police officers in the hospital right now um, trying to heal from their gun wounds. He gets this time to grandstand on gun control. Can you believe that? Yeah, of course I can. They do every time. <laughs> yeah. and so, so it's like, so he was a like, governor, of course, a Democrat, because it's always Democrats who want to take away our guns. They want to take away our guns. So therefore that they can go ahead and take away the rest of our rights. I mean, once you take away the second amendment, then the first amendment will automatically go away. So that's, I thought this up, that was an inappropriate thing for him to do, to sit up here and say, well, you know, the, 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 the way to rectify the fact that a Bernie bro has killed one of uh, our, our, our Republican, not our, uh, his, his opponent <laughs> uh, um, with a, with a uh, assault rifle is by basically having gun control as if that's going to stop them. Because guess what stopped this fool? Guns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't, I, 
I don't no know. disagreement from me on this subject. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what it will take for, I don't know, maybe this is it. Maybe this is, because I looked on Twitter. I don't know if you checked Twitter out. Uh, then again, you might not uh, have a, a lot of leftists. I don't either, but I just went into the lefty part of Twitter and they're laughing about this. Hmm. They are glorifying the fact that uh, uh, a Bernie bro has killed, especially members of Antifa. Um, have you had so they're any? They're supporting it. Oh, absolutely. They're not okay. condemning it. Of course, the um, the political officials are condemning it. I still haven't heard anything from Maxine James Brown wig waters yet on the subject, but I am. Uh, I think other uh, Democrats have condemned the actions, especially Bernie. Have you? But but this is the thing. If this was just imagine, if this was our side, if this was the conservatives, say for instance, this was a Trump supporter who went and shot Nancy Pelosi. Do you think we were here? The, and how long do you think we would talk about that one situation? Oh, yeah, for months. And it would be he would be a, a, a Nazi and you know, a white supremacist. And even if he killed a bunch of white people. Exactly. <laughs> we, we exactly. Why, why yeah. do you think that is? What's, what do you think? Uh, and why do you think the left is so focused on the whole Nazi white supremacist? Even though there's nothing white about me, uh, nappy hair, dark skin, full lips, there's nothing Nazi about me yet. And still, I was called a Nazi by a white liberal. What's What do you think this is all about? Well, I mean, this is why the alt-right has formed. We've <laughs> formed in opposition to the left because there is an all-out war on white people. And that is exactly why the alt-right has formed. I know you want to go into this. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to definitely go into it. So let me give everybody, because let me tell everybody why I have Lana here on the show today. I wanted to learn about white nationalism. I wanted to learn about the alt-right. Um, and I already know about white supremacy. I, I've had a chance to talk to a couple of white supremacists. So I kind of got an understanding of that. But to me, it seems like there was, um, th there's, it seems like it's alt right is a different category than a white nationalist. Am I wrong or am I right? Or yeah, am there's I... a, there's a lot of nuances here, a lot of nuances that I'd like to get into, but I'm, I'm curious, you said that you talked to a, you know, some white supremacists. How would you define white supremacy? <laughs> uh, very honest people. Um, to me, they, it, it's come from a lot of anger. Uh, the three that I have talked to, um, without, and that's the thing for a black woman like myself to talk to them, I have to look at it from their point of view and all of them had something in common. They were not indoctrinated into white supremacy. It was situations that had either occurred to them personally by black people or by someone they loved. And they happened to come across another white supremacist who said, yeah, you know, uh, they did let that, uh, that man who, that, uh, that, uh, black man, he didn't say black man. He said, nigger that let them out of jail, uh, for only six months who raped your sister. Yeah. That's, that's not right. Is it? You feel angry about it. Don't you come on over to this meeting and we'll talk about it together. So he had a way to go through a therapy group with other men and some women of like mind who also felt angry and powerless. And so from, so from your point of view, you see a uh, white supremacy based on this conversation is uh, guys who are angry at black people or don't like black people. Is that how you would interpret? No, white no, I, I see him. No, uh, I saw him as thinking uh, his race was superior and that uh, that all minorities, including black people, Hispanics, were inferior, that we were animals that needed to be caged, uh, that we uh, needed to be exterminated. Even a couple of them felt that we all needed to be exterminated. So it was a little bit more extreme. Okay. Uh, I wonder when, what... <laughs> when, when the white yeah. supremacists, hence why when I talked to the white nationalists, Mm -hmm. or the two white nationalists that I try to attempt to have a conversation with. Uh, it, I didn't hear a lot of extreme. There, there's anger in white the white nationalists I've talked to, but there's a lot of anger in the white supremacists I've talked to, but also 
more like a fury there. And when people want to understand the definition of racism um, and supremacy, this is this fit the mold exactly. Uh, he felt that the Aryan race was supreme and um, that mine is and anybody else in the minority that wasn't and that there it was a mistake uh, for us to come into uh, America or bringing us into America or allow us into America, whatever the fuck he wanted to say. It, just, it was just fascinating to just hear him spin history a little bit because the way he said it was like, like uh, <laughs> it was as if it was a volunteer thing with slavery. And, I, and I'm and i not one of the black people that like, you know, we built America. No, black slaves were in the cotton and tobacco field White people were the architects of Washington, D.C. They laid the foundation for the roads, the buildings. I get it. I totally get all that. But to say that the African ancestors, the, my, uh, the African slaves that were brought here, uh, some may have came here voluntarily from another country. But to say for the majority, no, that's just wrong. So, you know. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about the alt right and basically what it is. And, and to put it in really simple terms, you know, the alt right is primarily it's an American movement, but it's really based on the identitarian movement of, of Europe, which you probably know. Mm -hmm. But the the alt right is a response really to this anti white agenda. And, and you you see it. You see it as a black woman. Yeah. <laughs> the, the attack on white people. We hear that whites are the problem in the world. Only whites are racist. Whites don't have a culture. Whites only steal, kill and enslave around the world. And we should be guilty guilty and hate ourselves you you i've seen you've made tweets about that and you know this white yeah. self hatred and how how sick it is i but hate it i <laughs> hate the, I, I hate the white self hatred the most and we're also told that white doesn't even exist throughout all of this and that race is a construct. So it's really just it screws with your mind. But then you have from entertainment, you have news, you have education. We constantly hear about how white people are the problem. And now we're even told, even in all of Europe, that, you know, Europeans aren't diverse. In as many countries and languages as there are in Europe, it's not diverse. And we must import millions of non-Europeans and open the borders and become diverse or we're, you know, evil, racist Nazis. What do, you, what do you say about... <laughs> Excuse me. What do you say about... Well, let me give you some, some background information uh, about my personal experience with Germany. I lived in Germany for five years. When I was uh, exposed to Germany for the first time uh, in 2005, uh, I went to a town called Augsburg and I was invited by uh, a friend of mine from the, uh, from the UK who was living in Germany at the time uh, and invited me to come out there for the, the soccer World Cup. Everything was in Germany at the time. Um, it was very white. I loved it. I didn't see not one Turk there. Um, now, by the way, if you was to say what I'm about to say, you'd be accused of being racist, but it, right. I got black privilege. Ger Germany for the Germans. <laughs> Someone was saying that. I could say Nigeria for the Nigerians. Yeah. No problem, right? Right. Like, not Germany for the Germans. No, Can't no. Have that. And I yeah. love the culture. I love the language. And I fell in love with Germany and decided to move there. Well, my kitty cat uh, couldn't come with me because she was diagnosed with um, kidney failure. So she passed away in 2009 and 2010, instead of going to Augsburg, I had some friends in Berlin, big time culture shock. I saw a whole bunch of Turks there. And I was like, what the hell? Where the hell did all these Turks come from? And I was really shocked. And that's when I learned that Germans uh, I've invited a lot of uh, people from I don't, I can't second world countries because I don't even know if Turkish was a third world country at the time, but they, they invited these people from other poor countries as, as cheap labor. But here was the thing, the Turk, they allowed the Turks to bring their families in and they had babies like rabbits and, and they're also on welfare. They're not actually absolutely. really doing a lot of the work. Here. So the long yeah. story short, I got out of Berlin. I hated it. It was, it was not my white Germany that I fell in love with. I came to Germany because I liked it for this culture. I like the white Germans. Well, okay? that's just it. If you love diversity, then you want you want to have Germans, you want to have Swedes, you want to have Nigerians. And the way that you have that is through supporting nationalism so that that culture can yes. exist and, and thrive and they can continue to have children. And then you can go travel and see these wonderful, beautiful cultures. But they don't want to have monoculture. Kids. 
here's the thing with Germans and that it broke my heart. And I came back last year after I moved to Munich and I stayed there for three years. And that's when I learned the, 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 horror, the horrific truth about the refugee program, multiculturalism. My Germany, the Germany that I loved was now turning into Pakistan. And I left heartbroken and angry. Okay. Now here's what I wanted to, to say that it white Germany don't want to be white anymore. And you know why that is, is a lot of the programming to hate yourselves. You have to atone for your evil racist Nazi past, the Holocaust. This is used as a weapon. When you grow up in Germany, we have a lot of friends who grew up in Germany. They don't hear the end of it. I mean, it's very abusive when you're a young kid and you grew up in that environment. Your ancestors are evil. You need to make amends. You need to make things right. And so, of course, they're not having lots of children. And, of course, they're opening the doors to mass immigration because it's been a big uh, brainwashing you know, experiment happening on the Germans. So I, I, I feel awful for them. It would be awful to lose the Germans off the face of the earth. I thought you know? that the but Germans then, would be smarter than that. And, and, I, and I, I totally agree everything what you said, but it's other Germans who are teaching, who are indoctrinating other, these German children to grow up and hate themselves. And, yeah, and a, and a lot of leftists as well. Of course, there's a lot of white anti-whites, and those are, those are the sickest of them all. I mean, really, those are our biggest enemies, are our own people who are allowing this to happen and hating their own thank people. Thank you for saying yeah, that. That's my sickening. biggest problem. It's like, I... I, this is what I wanted, this is what I wanted you, not you, excuse me, this is what I wanted people to say. It's like, listen, folks, it wasn't black people saying this. This was other white Germans saying we are bad people. But here's the question, though. I can't, look, as much as, much as I used to, I don't love Germany anymore. I, I'm very angry with, with what happened to me, what happened to my family over there and when i say family i adopted a white german family as mine you know my own um a lot of horrific things i don't want to talk about it in detail at, at all actually but a lot of horrific things happened to my family which caused most of them to leave and go to places like austria and poland and my thing is is that when white germans you're when you tell them even i as a black american said you have nothing to be ashamed of you have no right to sit up here and feel that you have to uh, pay reparations or any kind of, 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 of monetary gain or no monetary uh, welfare, excuse me, any kind of welfare to people who don't respect you when they don't even listen to me and they rather go ahead and sign that, that contract for their demise. What could you do? What can you do at that point at that moment? Now, I do have to slip in. There is one fellow who actually is Jewish, Gregor Gissi. There's Barbara Spector. There's Anetta Kahani. Uh, did I mention Barbara Spector? Yeah, I mean, yeah. several uh, Jewish groups, though, that are based in Germany that are also thrilled about this because they have a lot of hostility and resentment about the Holocaust and expulsion. So they're also rejoicing the disappearance of Germans. And they're, they've been very open about that as well. But the Germans are allowing it to happen. That's my that's yes. my arg argument is, is that if you uh, it's like black people blaming white people for being in the ghetto. OK. And they can, they will use the analogy of, well, who, who owned the business, who owned Microsoft, who owns Facebook, it ain't nothing but the white folks, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, there's so many programs afforded to us that there's no such thing as we can't pull ourselves up by a bootstrap. I am an example of that. I grew up in the ghetto, uh, under some awful parents, um, a very, very abusive mother, and I got out of that situation, okay? And with the help of white folks, by the way. And the thing about it is, is that uh, I won't allow white, excuse me, I won't allow black people to get away with that. Let's blame whitey, okay? Because yeah. it's black people holding black people down. Germans are holding Germans down. Yes, if, if, even, if it, the, even if this is what you're saying true, and I'll go ahead and say it is true. When you're shown that you are signing your demise and you get in, and especially the, the Green Party, the Green Party is the most awful party. It is worse than, than yeah, Merkel's they're bad. party. They're and, communists. And, yeah. Yeah, and when they say in 20 years, German will no longer be white, 
and this is a good thing and they all start clapping yeah it's sick it's it's sickening of course you know the leftists have really have really done a number to germans and you know part of me is compassionate you know for some of these people and i really feel for them because of all the propaganda that they've had to grow up with and the guilt i mean there's been millions of probably billions of dollars spent on making them feel guilty and holocaust movies and education and programming you know so it's this big beast that they've been up against so you know i really feel for them i don't i but, don't feel for them because the, if if they're the intelligent people that I thought that they were, Lana, they should have never fell for the okie doke. They should have. They should have saw propaganda when they when it was flashed on their face, whether it's on TV and or whether it's lot, told. There's a lot of smart Germans that do see. You just don't hear about it. And then if they do speak out against these things, yeah, you know, they'll they go get to jail. Nazis. There's no. laws in place. You're inciting hatred of this group or that group, and then they come for you. Well, but I think. Uh, Quietly, there is actually a large number of those people. They're nah, just terrified. No, to speak no, it up. is not because no. Merkel's going to win again, and that right there just shows where the majority is. The AFD, am I saying that right? Uh, uh, the the um, the right wing party, I think it's the AF. I think it's the alternative AF for Deutschland. Yeah. Okay. Why are they less than nine percent? If what you're saying is true, the AFD should not have an eight percent support in germany it, it should not be that low and i support that party if, I, if yeah. i'm not in germany i support that party but yet still here you have uh germans are going to put martin schultz who is just a male version of of merkel and this is who you have to compete this is who who have the chance at, at chancellor angela merkel and martin schultz and they both have an overwhelming majority of the German vote and the German support. I even lost some German friends when I brought my video, my video called uh, uh, Let's Make Germany Great Again. Um, that video went viral on Facebook with 4.5 million subscribers. It is, um, excuse me, with views. It is also the video that got me an arrest warrant from Angela Merkel herself. I, That's right. I, think I have I've a, heard about yeah, your I got story. a fucking Correct. arrest yeah. warrant because as, yeah. as a resident of Germany, I'm a legal resident, I fall beneath their laws, even though I'm in my own country where I have the Second Amendment to say what I want to say. I, I'm good. If I go anywhere in the EU, I get arrested. And I'm like, if I go to, if I go to Italy, because Italy is part of the EU, what they'll do is they'll hold me at the customs a, a gate and then the German police from, from Bayern will come down, get me in handcuffs and take me back to German, to Germany to go to German jail and to go to German court for, for having such a video that went viral out there. And this is where, and you're absolutely right, Merkel starts to implement a lot of these um, uh, censorship uh regulations on the internet as well yeah. as enforcing new laws well this is ultimately at the end of the day this is where germans have to decide do they want to survive as a people or do they not i mean this is really what it's going to come down to i, I can tell you they don't because the fact is is that if angela merkel still have a winning ch <laughs> she it's like i said afd is shunned by the overwhelming majority of germans they shouldn't mm -hmm. have eight percent uh, support. And so my thing is, listen, and, and you're talking to somebody who love German people. I, I, I love, I hate the country. I hate half the people, especially the, the ones who refuse to, to unplug themselves. Even when you tell them, even if they unplug themselves and kept their mouth shut and not tell people that they're red pilled or unplugged or whatever, they still are going to vote Merkel into office again. And if she doesn't win, which she will, they got nothing but the two, the two prime leaders are just the same people still promoting the devastation of Germany. It's I think no matter consent. what happens, there's always going to be um, a good group of people that is against that. There's always going to be some kind of opposition. And who knows, they might have to break off and, and <laughs> be their own country at some point or form something new. But I think that there will be some good people that are going to survive and come out of this in the end. Yeah, they will have to go to another country like Poland, who is determined 
uh, to keep their their Christianity, their, their religion, and to keep their culture. And they don't have no problem being white. Neither does Hungary, neither does Czech Republic. But I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Germany is not that country. German, just like Sweden is not that country. I'm shocked about Sweden. Now, I don't know anything about Sweden personally. I've never been there. But when you have white feminists, as well as I, I just saw they had a new chick from Nigeria talking about some, no, 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 we don't need to deport the rapists. We don't need to report <laughs> all these people. And I'm yeah. like, when you, when you, when you sign that as an overwhelming majority, because it, it takes a majority to allow that to happen. This is why Trump is in office. Do you know almost every day I get some stupid person from one of those countries? Lately, it's been France. To say, oh, we have Macron and you have Trump. <laughs> and I'm like, is, are you think that's a bad thing? And, and this will say that ignorance is so, pro, it, it's so amazing to me. Then I'm thinking to myself, this is, by the way, this is just a mean, this is a mean me saying that. I'm being mean when I say this. Maybe they don't deserve the country, a culture. Maybe they don't deserve to have themselves, uh, um, uh, well, that's what that's what a lot of people on the alt right say too. I mean, at the end of the day, they have to fight. Do you want to survive as a people? Do you want to hang on to your culture? I mean, or is this a survival of the fittest type of thing going on here, right? So no. they're going to have to make that decision. But that's why you know us, the alt right, we're really a movement of white people who want to restore our our true identity as a people, our right to exist in our own countries without you know forced mass immigration and melting pots. Because as you know, we keep hearing, oh, it's a good thing that you're being replaced or that our birth rate are low that no. we should rejoice and we should have kids that don't look like us to end racism i mean these are the kinds of things that we hear and we the alt-right reject all these things i mean how would you feel if someone was telling you that you know only blacks can be racist the only solution is if you you know have kids that aren't black right i mean how would you feel as a person i, I would but i'm very fair about it i don't like it and i speak out against it but here's the thing um i don't see many uh, alt writers, or I guess my biggest problem, and I'm glad we're going to discuss this because maybe we just need to bring this out in the open. I have a problem of white people, whether they're alt right, conservative, whatever category they're in, not holding other white people accountable for the self hatred. Like, like prime example, I had to uh, our, our mutual friend of ours, who I'm not going to name at the moment is being attacked for being proud of being white. And she's being attacked by other white people. And this has been going on, oh, excuse me, and one Arab. She's been attacked by a whole lot of white people and one Arab. And this has been going on for weeks. I took to Twitter and started to attack those white people and that Arab for attacking her. Guess what? They all ran away with their tails in between their legs like a hurt dog. And what I am saying is, why did I have to do that? Well, there actually is. The alt-right is very aggressive towards going after leftists. Uh, I don't know what kind of shows you watch or what kind of articles you read or uh, know if you know about the movement as a whole or the conferences, but we we actively charge leftists all the time for pushing this white self-hatred and uh, anti-white propaganda. But the other part of that, and I know you had mentioned before, is that there's no doubt that there's, you know, there is a Jewish influence here. There, I mean... It's okay to notice connections here. It's not that you're, oh, you're just blaming all the Jews. No, no, if you, I don't if believe you look, that. If you look into it for yourself, you'll see, I mean, there's hundreds of, of Jewish orgs that are actively supporting and pushing for mass non-European immigration. Uh, they're talking about racism. They're charging white people. And as you know, Jews don't, they don't self-identify as white, even though a lot of European Jews, they, they look white. But the, the thing that the alt-right has a problem with here is that they have one standard for Israel, while they're charging European countries, you know, they're not telling Israel, a Jewish state, that they must become multicultural. They're not charging them for racism when they deport their Africans to Sweden. I don't know if you know that they're doing that or that women are still segregated, you know, according to gender in certain areas. So really, with all the talk of these Jewish orgs talking about racism and open borders, they're agitating white hatred and they're never charged. Israel's never charged for remaining a Jewish state. That That's a huge thing. I mean, rabbis won't even 
marry a Jew to a non-Jew in Israel and you have to prove Jewish citizenship. But then they come into America and, and it's a whole other standard applies to them. Uh, it doesn't mean all Jews, you know, are guilty of this, but Jewish elites are definitely a very organized group. They're tribal minded. They don't consider themselves white. And they're a small minority that really dominates in banking entertainment, media, and it's never considered tribal or Jewish privilege, right? No, they just worked hard for it. But but white people somehow just like stole it all, people that aren't Jews, right? But it's also Jewish people in Hollywood that are constantly making and producing anti-white propaganda nonstop in Hollywood. And as we said earlier, I think a lot of it comes from they're resentful of Jewish expulsion. They've been kicked out of hundreds of places in Europe in the past for, for their behavior, different reasons. And they're constantly fearful of the rise of fascism constantly, right? Because they've had experiences with it. So this really is the root of a lot of their uh, resentment and hatred for Europeans. So that that is why we're talking about it, uh, why, why the alt-right brings up the JQ. It's not just blaming just some <laughs> some guy in the sky. There's actually connections here. There's actually groups. There's actually people actively working against us with uh, billions of dollars. And Really, I mean, Jewish intellectuals from the Frankfurt School, if you go far back, introduced the tenets of political correctness and a lot of the anti-white thinking today. And I think that they need to be, they, they deserve to be criticized in some ways. Why is it that Jews can get away with any kind of behavior and for some reason they don't, they're not criticized. They're the one group you can't criticize. Why is that? And then they use the Holocaust as a weapon, uh, but we can't ignore the, the Bolshevik revolution of a lot of Jews were leading that. You can't deny the uh, Ukrainian famine. You can't deny the the Young Turks, uh, the Armenian genocide, lots of Jews involved in the Young Turks. Uh, they deny it and they call it anti-Semitic when, when you call that out. Why is that? And today I, I mentioned two people like Barbara Spector, uh, Gregor Gysi, Noel Ignatiev. Th these are people with influence and power. This isn't just some conspiracy that's made up that are actively pushing and talking about how it's a good thing to replace, you know, Germans or Swedes or European people. And uh, yet not for Israel, no multiculturalism for Israel. I mean, haven't haven't you noticed that double standard at all? I noticed that it seems to me that white people fall for the okie doke that Germans do. If that's the case, because the person who shot uh, the congressman today was white. The person, the comedian that held up Donald Trump head was white. The woman who was at the, uh, who the singer who talked about, they wanted to burn down the white house. Kathy Griffin was Jewish, by the way. Oh, she, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ah, that's a T that's a win for you. <laughs> I did not know that. I did not know that. I did not know that. I learned something. Um, is Madonna white? Is Madonna Jewish too? No, she's not. Look, she's not. I, I'm not saying that uh, white anti-whites don't exist. Like I said, they're they're a massive problem, a massive enemy. But, but here's my also... thing: if 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 I won't if I hold black people accountable and I won't let them blame you for where they are, why would I allow you to blame or white people to blame Jews for where they are? Here's my thing: is that I don't see Jewish people say fuck white people. I and the the white people I went after on Twitter were not Jewish. They were white except for one which was an Arab. The one I went after for attacking my white friend for being proud of being white what they were not Jews. I know that for a fact, okay? And then Kathy Griffin was maybe a surprise I did not know. You're, you're talking about like little interactions on Twitter and, and maybe some little groups here and there, but I'm talking about powerful, active, organized organizations, the messages that they're pushing. And the fact is there's hundreds of Jewish organizations Dude, that means pushing that the mass same immigration. Thing that the black and people so can say the same thing. You, it's you, not you, just... You this know isn't that a matter the... of just blaming. It's a matter of calling truth, truth. There, there are groups that are actively working against our interests. And uh, it's it's not blaming and putting all my problems on it to, to notice things. I mean, that's what the left does. It's a war on noticing. Black... You can actually call things out by their name and say who's doing what, right? Black Lives Matter, the pro-blacks, the Israelite, the, the, the Hebrew Israelites can say the same thing you're saying, except that they're, they can say it's white people. They can say the same thing you're saying about the Jews. They can say the same thing. And instead of, as far as I'm concerned, I'm saying, how are you not responsible? 
That's oh, that. I'm not saying I'm not saying white people aren't responsible. There's many layers to this. This is a very <laughs> deep, then, complex mess that we're in. Whites have been duped. Yes, they've been allowed to be bamboozled by a lot of this Marxist rhetoric, Marxist thinking, all this propaganda coming out of Hollywood. Yes, of course, they're they are also guilty of that. I, I'm not denying that, but there are forces actively working against our people too that have their own interests and that also black people needs can to say be, the same needs thing. To be called out. Well then what's the solution to this? The alt right offers that nationalism. Jews have a home. I, black should have a home, Europeans should have a home, and if people want multiculturalism, I mean, there's uh, lots of America already has parts of that, Brazil has parts of that, um, why can't white people just have a pocket of their own? So then we don't even have to get into these scenarios of fighting and bickering with each other, and it's just easier when we can be the majority in our own countries to avoid all of these problems to begin with, wouldn't you agree? America is my home. Sure, of course, and you're not you're not going anywhere. The alt right's not saying, uh, "Oh, we're going to deport deport you." That is just it's just we're just going to. I like to see them try. That's, <laughs> not, well, I'm, that's not what we're saying. Here I, at I all. know, I know. I'm just joking with you. What, what I'm saying is, is that um, uh, the, the the whole I don't even really entertain the whole. Let's. I guess what you're saying is, why can't white people have their own state where it's just white people, right? Well, uh, yeah, anywhere. At this point, we can't even have our own country. No, 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 no. That's not true. I, I, I mentioned I mean, three. there's parts of Eastern Europe, but the EU is even pushing quotas. No, and, and, no, and, and, and you know what? They refugees. fight. They do something white people here don't do. They fight back. Poland, the prime minister, oh, she was fierce, girl. She told Merkel. Yeah, she's good. She yeah. told Merkel, we are not having multiculturalism here in Poland. And yeah. you know, and you know what the um the 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 leader of Hungary said? The leader of Hungary told all of his residents, I'm sorry, Czech Republic. I'm confusing too. The leader of the Czech Republic told all his residents to go and collect arms to defend themselves against terrorism. Now, he didn't really mean it for terrorism. He was it was just a way to get his citizens to start arming themselves just in case the EU was going to try to do an uh, a ban on their uh, on their uh AR rifles. So he was smart enough to tell his citizens Take up arms. See, these are my kind of white people. I love these kind of white people because they don't take no shit. They fight back and they're not going to let nobody tell them what to do. Sure. And you know what? But that's that's what the alt-right is doing. We're, we're organizing. We're a large group. We're growing numbers. We refuse to be guilty for what our ancestors have done. We refuse to apologize. We refuse to have guilt. And we refuse to be taken out. <laughs> we have a right to exist and we are are actually fighting back and our numbers are growing and it's not based on hate like the media says that I mean there's people actively trying to replace us and then when you notice that oh stop hating I mean come on they're the ones who are hating white people I mean just because I want a space for white people doesn't mean I can't sit here and have a conversation with you or have commonalities yeah. there's things we agree with we both both don't like the it doesn't mean we can't have friends of other races we just believe that we should be able to also have in America the freedom to associate with who we want or don't want to with. So if there is a black separatist or a white separatist group and they want to go to Idaho or wherever, I support that because that's freedom. But, but our you, current government You do understand that the thing about that's not realistic because you're going to have a minority in that state regardless. So, and, and, and this is where you're going to educate me because I don't understand. So let's, let's use Idaho. Idaho is very white. So what? No minorities there whatsoever? Oh, uh, I was uh, just there not too long ago, and actually they've been uh, dumping, if I could use that word, lots of uh, refugees in some of the whitest little towns. Twin Falls, in fact, there was a, a five-year-old girl who was just uh, assaulted by three of those, sexually assaulted, and there was a big oh, case around I that. To hear the that. little town of Twin Falls is only 30,000 people. So, I mean, when Obama was in office, they were literally talking about zip codes that are too white, right? That they need to be diversified. So it's almost like they're chasing down the white people. Like, where is white flight happening? Okay, we need to go enforce diversity in those businesses. We need to have quotas. We need to do whatever we need to do to get in more. Then why didn't there. white people fight back? 
Well, there are some white people fighting back. There, there are. There's see, I don't see. I, I, maybe because you're in it, you see it. But yeah. I, I, I never seen it. And just, just like I don't, didn't see any white people defend my white friend. Okay, on, you know, what I'm saying. And I'm not saying. Don't, let me just say because I can, I can hear the trolls talking about something. You know, you can't defend her against trolls. I get trolled. Everybody get trolls. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about white people. Uh, bashing her for a tweet she sent out, okay, defending her, um, the, the, the Germans, I think, is, is, is part of her heritage. She's defending her culture, her heritage, okay? There's nothing yes. wrong with what she said. Yeah. I said something twice as worse, and they didn't come for me. Yes, it was yeah. black privilege that the reason they didn't come for me, but the fact is, is that, you know, I don't see this fighting. It was well, me like who fought. Like the Germans, white Americans have had a massive millions of dollars spent in propaganda, education, movies, telling us we're the problem. We can't love our culture. Where we can't was love this fight at? You know, I did, so, that's no, my question. So we're, we're dealing, but, but we're dealing with this, this propaganda that's massive, that we have to first reach our people and wake them up out of this coma. And that's really what the alt-right is starting to do, to shake those people. Like, it's not wrong to to love your race and your people and your ethnicity. It's not wrong. Okay. I mean, that's the beginning of the work. Okay, now you're uh, talking my language. You know? So what do you got? Okay, because that that's what I want to get to because I'm not doing that whole blame thing. I just can't because if, if like I said, if, if you're going to put the Jews as the reason, then black people can put the whites as the reason why they are, they are oppressed. I don't okay. think it's just one thing. I think it's a combo of things of how white people got to where we are. And I think that the Jewish element is a part of that holistic um, puzzle, if you if you will, that is why where we are where we are. But you allowed it's, yourself it's to get that, there. Sure, sure, of course, of course. But I mean, you, you can't deny, though, that there is an element working actively against white people. I, and it's a, I, I, I want Lana... I love white people. And I know I'm going to be called a coon for saying that, but I do. I want the best for you. I want the best for white people. I appreciate but, that. But the thing about it is, here's the thing. If you guys won't recognize that there's a cancer within your own race, it's not going to get... Well, we have. Uh, if you listen to our, a, lot of, a lot of our shows, a lot of people talk about these things. Jared Taylor's always questioning this. There is something, that there is a disease in the mind of white people. The fact that they can hate themselves the way they do and just be ready to just throw away everything their ancestors built. We do not deny that by, by any shape, way or form here at all. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's part of the work that we're trying to do here. Like I said, first waking up a lot of white people. Like, uh, how, how do, how do we, I, 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 I'm going to, I, I'm going to consider myself participating in this because like I said, I am telling, <sighs> I miss my little nephew so much, my German nephew. He's he's in Austria, so and um, I was very effective in making sure that he was not indoctrinated underneath this uh, hate hate who you are because you're responsible for Hitler and the Nazis in World War II. Okay, yeah. I showed him powerful uh, German scientists and builders and architects and I, and, and artists. And I show him the beautiful things that Germans, his people have done. Okay. I have helped him because I'm proud of being black. I never was, I never was told to be, uh, to be ashamed of being black. And I'm taking those same, those same teaching techniques and I have applied it to him. Okay, I haven't been able to talk to him in a long time because of the whole warrant situation. But, but my thing is, I consider myself helping as well. So my question to you is, how do we go about this? Or maybe you guys are doing something I'm not sure. How do you stop white people hating themselves? Yeah, this is this is the question, you know, and this is something that people are trying to do from many different angles. Sometimes it's about just. Uh, breaking through through humor so we have people who do that there there's some people that are intellectually trying to get people to look at, at this there's people that are trying to use logic there's people that are trying to use memes there's people that are trying to look into history so i mean white people are kind of diverse we're a complicated person we don't just unite under a race <laughs> you know it's not that it's not that simple for white people so we're, we're trying to go why at it. isn't it that simple but i think but i think starting with the basic 
double standards does a lot because it's very simple. So we have to keep it very simple. Why is it okay for you uh, as a black woman to have pride in who you are, your culture, your ancestors, but me as a white woman, exactly. that, that's I agree. a problem. I so agree. I think really looking at those and, and forcing people to answer that does a lot. And that's what I have done on Twitter. I, I put this like, why can I say something worse than what she said and not one white person and that Arab come for me? No one, not one of them. And then yeah. when one of them attacked her, I came for him. And like I said, they did, they, they ain't want none of this. And the thing about it is, is that I did not like that. Where are the white people who are supposed to, this is their job. Now she's my friend. I got her back. I, I come from the old school of you have your friends back no matter what. If they wrong, you still defend them and then you take them to the side and go, when out, without people looking and you go, hey girl, that was fucked up what you did. That was wrong. You shouldn't have not done that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but we still cool. I'm not going to embarrass you in front of everybody. I'm going to always have your back. Where are the white people who have other white people's back? I don't see them. Please well, show I'm, me. I'm, I'm one of those. Red Ice is one of those. We've got <laughs> you know, the, the alt-right movement is definitely that. And like I said, we're growing. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are afraid of showing their faces and speaking publicly because you get fired. Yeah. You get ostracized. Your family and friends hate you. So it's hard for a lot of people to come out and be public. But as it becomes a little more socially acceptable, as more people have conversations like you and I are having, then more people feel comfortable. I've seen lots of women, if you look in my archives, I've been interviewing lots of young girls who are now feeling comfortable talking about that. So we're having some breakthroughs okay. that are happening here. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. that, I, I got to say that because I, I just, that bothers me more than anything. Um, it bothers me it's, too. It's, it's, it's bothers the, me. I, it, I hate it. I hate it because I, um, I don't want... I, in my real life, none of my white friends are ashamed of being white. They're very proud of who they are. Okay. And, and we're so open and honest. We take, we say, we tell racist jokes with each other. Okay. It's, 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 there's yeah. no PC shit going on with me. That's but right. when yeah. I get on the internet, it's a totally new world. <laughs> and so I, I want us to, to, I will unite to help stop the self-hatred of white people. Cause I, it's, first of all, let me just say this. I, it's in my best interest that white people stay the majority and not become a minority. I would hate for America to be, oh good, I can't even say it. I, I it, it, You it, can it, say it. It, 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 it. I'm afraid because it's like, I would get chills up my spine to think, of black America. Are you shitting me? And somebody said, or or maybe Mexico or Hispanic America. And I know it's I, I just and somebody I, I had a white person said, Well, what what well what do you mind? What would America look like if it was black? I said, combine South America with Chicago. There you go. Okay. I white people yeah, I have some characteristics that pisses me off. Like you're too nice sometimes, yeah, but, yeah. but you, but you're compassionate and yeah. you are generous and you're considerate. And I, I, and it's unfortunate that some of those characteristics are to your default because yeah, I've been I'm, taken advantage of. Oh my really, God, yeah. y'all been taken advantage of and yeah. I hate it. Well, and you, I, you know, it's bad when people who aren't white are seeing all these things and screaming at white people. I hate <laughs> it's, it. It's, it hurts it's my bad. heart. It hurts my heart because I, I'm saying to myself, come on guys, I can't fight your battles. You gotta help me, help you, help me, help you, please. I can't do this myself. You gotta help me help you. And I, I teach self-defense classes. I tell, uh, actually I said this last year. I said, listen, even though Trump, it's a video, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna put a link in the description. I said, just because Trump won, doesn't mean we can sit up here and go, oh, the work is over. No, the left is going to go crazy. We need to start, you know, those of you who are living a, a, a gun friendly uh, state, you need to start learning how to shoot a gun, go to the gun range, go buy one. Okay. Start learning some self-defense class, get yourself in shape, start eating right, start learning how to protect yourself. If you, if you feel like a gun is just too much, then go get a, a paint gun or, uh, or go get some, some mace, defend yourself. Stop allowing people to beat you up. We don't have Obama in office anymore. He was the worst president 
ever. Because of him, race relations have gotten out of control. So what do you think the solution is then? In, in America, we've got uh, massive amounts of non-Europeans flooding in. Uh, as you said, I don't think that you're happy about that either. No, so I'm not. What's the, what's the solution? Because the alt-right, we want to stop mass immigration. It is I mean, white judges. It's a white women. Now, you correct me on that one. Feel free to correct me on this one. Is the judge in Hawaii white or what that stopped him from his travel ban? Yeah, I'll have to, to look into his uh, his roots there. Because but yeah, the, as a the, Seattle, a the, Seattle man. Yeah. The white racist Democrats are the ones and the never Trumpers like McCain, okay, and the others, also white, are constantly putting blocks uh, blockades in front of Trump every time he's trying to do something. Mainstream media, majority white, yes, owned by Jews. Yeah, Supreme Court justices, I think there's uh, three three or four Jews on there as well. But yeah, media, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> lots of lots of Jewish... Uh, How on, does... On okay, media. here's a sincere question. I'm still not going to agree with the whole Jew thing, but I, I find out that I'm ignorant about who's a Jew and who's not. And, and I'm sure you know this, or maybe you don't, to black people, y'all all the same, okay? I know. Of course, of course. They see Ashkenazi, all they see is, right. is white. But if you ask a lot of those How Jews, they do, do not. They make it very the clear they don't identify. Well, that's just it. They're, they're, it's convenient. They can blend in as white at times, and then they're Jewish at times. So, you know. But a lot of times nowadays, it's uh, it's almost like like royalty. <laughs> you get treated so well. If they can you, blend. You mention you're Jewish, so they'll let you know. If they can <laughs> blend in so well, then why not just say, all right, then we just need to go ahead and get white people to make other white people who are self-hating, who are attacking other white people for being white, uh, accountable for their actions. Why do we not go after them? Okay, because I can't tell the difference. As you can tell, I did. I, you blew my mind. I had no idea Kathy Griffin was Jew, but she's white as far as I'm. So it's like instead of just breaking it down, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. Let's just say. Let's go after self-hating white people. Can we just, you know, because why can't I go after? I go, I go after everyone that's attacking. To me, you're, well, you're uh, so, uh, uh, so white or you're anti-white because there are some Jews that uh, I've even interviewed. We've even had a couple on that are very supportive that understand. But that's I'll fair. Go after, no, I'll that's go after fair. You if you're an Arab or if you're a Jew or if you're a white, if you're anti-white, I stand uh, corrected. I'll go after anyone. I stand know? corrected. Absolutely. I apologize. I stand corrected. Um. Because, and I said that in my defense because that's all I, I see the majority. Because now that Obama's out of office, when Obama was in office, it was mostly black people. I feel like killing a cracker today. All right? Yo, let's fuck some white people up. Oh, y'all hear me? It's I hear that now. I hear I don't hear that and see that as much as I see other white people. But you're absolutely right, Lana. Why now, not go after everybody? Let's go after everybody who exa hates white Exactly. People. And no one should be free from criticism. That's what I'm saying here. Whether As, you're I agree. white or Arab or Jewish or black, every, no one should be free from criticism. I agree. We should 100%. be able to look at everyone's actions here. Yes. Now, when it comes to uh, groups, do you think that there has been anyone in particular who, who do you think incited a lot of hatred uh, of white people amongst the blacks? Has there been any agitators, you think, that has been well, agitating uh, blacks against We whites? always had uh, um, the 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 anti-white pro-black movements, you know what I'm saying, since the 50s? Ooh, God, I got to fact check myself. Um, I have, I must say that Black Lives Matter and the new Black Panther Party, because I went to go dig up a lot, the new Black Panther Party, which is no affiliation to the original Black Panther Party. But I, I went to go look at their videos. Oh my God, they are actually advocating blacks to go out and literally shoot white people. I never thought that that was the case. And I actually have video clips because I'm, I'm actually collecting all of this fuck white people um, uh, content. It's very hard to watch. It's hard. It's so hard to watch uh, all of this content of black people beating up white people and shooting and killing black people and then kidnapping black people, uh, excuse me, Black people shooting white people and kidnapping white people and and ki and killing white people. This was hard to watch, um, but to me that that has just escalated more with Obama 
uh, adopting uh, Black Lives Matter, and he put the nail in the coffin when his, oh, I hate that man. I hate, I hate Obama. When he said, if I had a son, he would look just like Trayvon. Yeah. I can't stand it. Once yeah, he, he did that. that, once he did that, it was a wrap. Black people who hate white people was more over there and they started recruiting their white slaves and black people who was like, we ain't down with that shit, started coming over here and they started calling us coons. And it was, it's, we have been fighting ever since. And I think that's, that's the advantage that I have with a lot of white conservatives. I haven't stopped fighting since Obama and since Trump been in office. Okay. Me being a black conservative, it's an ongoing battle. No, I don't, I I don't minority, never put down. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's like being, being me on the right. I'm, I'm an uncle Tom. I'm a bed wench. I'm a coon. I'm all those things. I don't give a fuck about no names, but here's the thing. I'm already in fight mode. So it frustrates me when I don't see my white conservatives in fight mode too. Yeah, well, are you familiar with the term cuckservative? I mean, there's a lot of uh, right-wing Republicans that are, they go bend over backwards to prove that they're not racist and they never actually take a stand for their people. And that's why the alt-right is quite uh, critical of a lot of these how about we? Yeah. How about we call these people on uh, to be replaced? Why don't we organize together and, and replace these people who are not going to be behind Trump who are not going to stop. We have laws to stop this hatred. You do understand that. They are not being enforced. And I think we need to hold the representatives as well as people in political power as our law enforcement responsible for, we have to hold them accountable for implementing these laws that already are established. Well, I agree. I agree. We need to get better at organizing. And I think the alt-right is working towards becoming a political group and organizing to be able to fight back. But honestly, I'm kind of I'm starting to feel like, you know, after Trump and he's kind of let us down in some ways, I kind of feel that maybe doing this politically, those days are. are over. <laughs> why do you why <laughs> yeah. do you think why do you think Trump let you down? Well, I mean, he's not being hard enough on immigration. What's happening with the wall? There, he's, he's still blocked, bending over backwards him. for Israel, you know. Uh oh, God, yeah. here we go with Israel. Come on, Lana, well, help yeah, me I out, mean, man. I, I, <laughs> the thing is, do, do you support as a conservative? I don't understand why everyone supports Israel. We give them billions huh. of dollars every year. I don't want yeah. my hardworking tax money to go support the Jewish state of Israel. Okay. <laughs> well, in America, they tell me I'm racist because I want, you know. No, Europe no, no. I don't, I don't call you racist. I don't call you racist at all. Um, hold on, hold on. You do understand that he was blocked, funny. that Congress blocked him from having the budget. They didn't, they denied him to have the, the $2 million. Is it $2 million, $2 billion? They, they denied him from having the money for this past budget to do, to build a wall. That's not his fault. And that judge, that, that freaking judge in Hawaii put, um, yeah, how can one judge have that kind of power? I don't understand how one judge could say, "Oh, your but travel see, ban doesn't yeah, apply." I, I don't know either. Don't this was now. something. This was something. I, I. This is not. This first of all, this is not Trump's fault. But also, this is a law I did not know that could be used or abused because this is just abuse. So now he has to take. He's taking this to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is going to okay it, and the travel ban will come around. I need you all to understand that when Trump can't get shit done it's not his fault it's people in congress his own he have never trumpers on the right republicans who are fighting against him oh, including the democrat so then you but have when it comes when it comes to the wall though i mean let's you know all of us trump supporters if people for voted voted for him would be happy to donate time donate money to just get that wall built i think we have to i be i agree here and step no, outside the box, i, I you know? agree with him on well uh um ted cruz uh came up with a brilliant plan let me address the first thing you said and then i'll talk about ted cruz i agree with him not asking us for money we have financially supported him so much. I know I've given him lots of money. I, If I was Trump, I felt like it would be taking advantage of the American people uh, to ask them to contribute to a wall. I, I would not, ha I wouldn't do it either. That's just being, that's just being inconsiderate. Now, Ted Cruz came up with, uh, um, 
with an idea, which I think is excellent. The uh, cartel uh, mafia guy, I, I'm not good with names, but anyway, uh, he's in jail and he has the exact, if all his stuff is seized. Now, Ted Cruz, and I'm not, I'm paraphrasing this. This is not word for word, but he says, once he's convicted, once we seize all his assets, as well as his accounts, which has already been seized, we can take all that money and that will build the wall. But sure. guess what? Liberals are like, that's not right. You shouldn't do that to a Mexican. You're just a bully. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Every time our side come up with a plan, the Democrats got some got something to say about it. They always going to try to put a monkey wrench in the goddamn of course, engine. And, and we we knew that that was going to happen. Of course, well, he's going to fight harder and step up and be more creative and get the people behind yeah. him. But right? you can't talk about my president girlfriend. I can't let you get away <laughs> with that. No, no, you can't talk about my man now. That's hey, he, we supported him, so we don't want him to let us down. No, he's know? he's we'll not. He's I, what can he do I, under the circumstances? It's the first time I voted. The first time I voted for your president, so. and, and it was a lot of pe a lot of people. Not right. This, you know, we finally thought, okay, maybe politically, maybe we all support him. You know, is he going to yeah, get this done? Yeah, but he, it, what can he do when he has even his own people? Once again, we talked about the same subject. Cut fight against yes. him. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I, I think uh, once we unify, and then we'll we'll wrap up in about uh, another two three minutes. Um. But uh, I think once we we actually uh, get the people who are against him out of office, uh, replace them with someone who can support him, um, then he can get his job done. He, they're preventing him from doing his job. That's all that is. And, and as far as the alt-right is concerned, um, I, I, my question to you is, if, if, First of all, I got my friend handled. But what if there is a white woman who's proud of her race and she actually says something on a video or she says something on Facebook or she says something on tweet on a tweet on Twitter that is supporting she don't want white genocide. She doesn't want to see the demise of her heritage. And yes. yet still other white people come after her. How and what is there a bat signal or something she can contact the alt-right to come protect her or what I, i'm trying to figure out how how does she get the alt-right to come and defend her against other uh well she's got to connect with us you know start start with me <laughs> i know okay. a lot of people uh, that's a that's a good point to start with uh, connect with the other shows and other people who are out there doing videos and there's a, a good group of us out there now and we meet up and we're we're planning we're thinking of things you know this is just getting going this is just getting started and i realize our own people is the biggest obstacle here so we have to really be creative we're really being forced to step up and think of i mean this is a monumental task here that we're being called to do okay to wake up to wake up our people and the fact is you know the alt-right acknowledges that america may never be white again you know, the damage is being done. But the, I don't want you to be a minority. I don't want white people to be either. a minority I, I in America. I just did a video about that, too. Uh, why I don't want to be a minority if people want to check that out. But that's why it's important for white people to really embrace our identity. The alt-right really is a white identity movement. So even if there are no borders, even if, uh, you know, we're we're a minority, which I don't want that to be. We have to remain a, a nation through our, our actions and our uh, associations and support each other and remain kind of a nation within a nation. You know, identity is key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem. I have black pride. Why can't you have white pride? Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, some people consider white pride to be white supremacy. And yeah, that's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Product of the... The media blasting <laughs> media's movies blasting. Here we go again. You but that is all... true. <laughs> no, you have to say though, media and Hollywood has been ma a massive propaganda machine. Everyone who's brainwashed to this. Watch any stupid little TV show, I, I, you know. I'm and, not gonna let y'all. You'll, you'll, you'll find a Stein if you producing guys can it, fall and it will be that it will be anti-white. If know? you guys, That's if tough. white people can fall for that okey doke, then you guys are to blame. I didn't fall for it. 
How come well, y'all fall it, for it? I think, like you said, though, our kindness is being taken advantage yeah. of. So there, yeah. there's a lot of layers here, and it's coming from a lot of angles, and it's it's very complex. And and I try and weigh in every every possible side, not just not just one side. I, I think you're cool, actually. I, <laughs> I, I, um, uh, for those of you who I don't know, I was a little hostile to um, Lana initially because uh, I had a big. I had a big, oh my God, I had a very bad experience with a white nationalist. It ended badly um, with him being triggered and hanging up on me. And so when she contacted me, I was very hostile towards her and she was smooth and like water. She was just like very calm. She had excellent talking points. Um, She wasn't illogical at all. As you can tell, she's a very intelligent woman. And I was like, all right, girlfriend, let's, let's talk. Uh, and I would love to interview you and everything like that. And here we are. And even though we have some differences, we're able to have a good conversation. Right. Yeah. And, and and like I said, I, I, we don't, you and I have that one thing in common. We don't want white people to be a minority here in America. Okay. And I think when we take a, a when we start to get the people out that are causing um, to sabotage white people, uh, of all races, okay, then that's how we can put it into this. And I am willing to help. I've always been helping. Uh, I can't help but help being a conservative. And, uh, you know, once you know, doing that and having discussions like this and getting more people to join along to see this point of view, who knows? A lot of people could watch this and go, you know what? Those ladies make a good, uh, a good point. I'm going to start holding people who talk bad about white people accountable for their actions. And that's what I want. I want everybody who's watching this video to stop having other people say fuck white people to stop, regardless of the race, have them stop shitting on white people. Stop saying white people are racist just because they're white. Just put it, just stop it. Tell them that, you know, what they're saying is racist because, you know, I, I play the Jedi mind trick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, when a white person says that another white person, when he called Trump's racist, I go, what did he say that was racist? Well, he does, he wants to build yeah, a wall. you have to call him out on it. Yeah, yeah, I call him out on it. And then when you actually have them justify themselves, they get angry and they run away. You know what I'm saying? We have facts and logic on our right. side. And once we learn how to use it, that is how we can actually conquer a lot of them. But I don't throw your guns away, honey, because I'm telling you, <laughs> they starting to up the ante and we need to be prepared. So any yeah. final things? Uh, I got your website uh, on the screen here. And well, I think I, uh, too, I, I wanted to say, I think that if people stopped, you know, agitating people against whites and agitating races against each other, that people naturally are, are tribal and they'll, they'll just kind of file away with the, with their own people and live in pockets with people they share culture and history and ancestry with. And there's nothing wrong with that. We should support that. And that is all part of freedom, freedom of association. And we should encourage that in America too. And I think that you would agree with that. So then if people want to have multiculturalism, you can have it there. But the people that don't, <laughs> why, why is the, the argument for multiculturalism, why is that the morally superior one? Versus the people who say, no, I don't want it. Why is saying I don't want it? Why is that wrong? The, right? Those of us who are saying we don't want it, um, where our voices are not loud. By the way, for one, we got jobs. So we don't have time to march in the street and vandalize and all picket and, and have protests. We got work to do. Okay. Which makes it seem like that we are the minority and it's not because we show that we are, there's a huge silent majority who support Trump. And that's the reason why he's in office, regardless of what y'all, the, regardless of what these stupid liberals want to say about the popular vote. The thing about it is, is that, uh, I think that be, it appears that we are the minority because we don't make a big fuss. Yeah. I, I'm confused and conflicted. And maybe you can give me your insight after I say this. I don't, I, I'm not a, a shouter. Uh, I know I'm loud as a black woman, but that's just natural. That's a DNA thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not the kind of person that's going to go out and pick it and, and, and protest. And, yeah, and I'm not, I'm not I either. don't do that. Yeah. So, and, and, and because I don't do that and you don't do that and a lot of people don't do that, it seems like our voice is not heard. Maybe someone can come up with an idea of how we can have our voice 
be heard because there is a huge majority of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we need to think about. What are we going to do? How are we going to organize and start fighting back? And that is the question because something needs to be done. And you and I both agree on uh, a lot of the problems here. So that's yeah, good. And I'm, yeah. I'm thankful that you reached out to me and you're really, I think, rare. There's not, not, a lot of people, <laughs> not a lot of people like you. And I wish that there there were more people like you. So yeah. I appreciate well, let me tell you, it. I, I, thanks I, for I, standing I, up for white people. Uh, hey, I, 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 my my safety and health depends upon you guys being a majority. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said this to uh, to. Uh, uh, in reference to Mike Woods Jr., who is a white guy who hates himself and his whiteness, uh, he, he wants to say uh, that uh, that uh, black people are safe in black neighborhoods. I said, you are a damn lie. I said, I as a black person am more safer in a white neighborhood than in all black neighborhood. Are you serious? So it's like, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's in, when I say selfishly, it's in my best interest that white people stay the majority. I am saying that selfishly for financial reasons, for my safety reasons. Of course, you have interests. That's yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Yeah, so it. this is why it's like I'm being honest. Like I don't want white people to be in the minority. That's not going to work out well for me at all. That's and right. so, and, 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 and that's the thing. And I want it to, I want the white, to, this white hatred to stop. And yes, we do agree on that. So. Cool. Uh, any parting words? I'm gonna let you um, leave one out. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think uh, I think we said a lot of things. Sorry, you had some bad experience with some weirdos before. Maybe they were feds. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 oh, you yeah. brought up Aryan nations, and there's actually I know Michael Hoffman, uh, an author who we've had on Red Ice before, has detailed actually the the feds. That set up Aryan nations and had a whole operation there. So yeah, that's amazing. You know what? And it made me think. Like out of the three Aryan nation uh, members I talked to, and now you got me thinking. Like, God, could any, uh, all of them be feds? You know, I now I don't know. I, I can't even yeah. tell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and you know, our, our government's been creating all, all kinds of groups, right? I mean, they, they infiltrate different terrorist groups yes. or they even create them on purpose. They they justify their existence, really, is what they're doing. But they say they're trying to, to coax out the extremists and stuff. But they are actually, like, feds go in there and they actually push Absolutely. them to violence, you know? I mean, it's awful. I actually so. learned that from the original Black Panthers of Self-Defense when I was teaching people. And I was like, listen, you got to do your homework. They are not the group that you think they are. They were a very good group for the black community. They were infiltrated by the FBI, J. Uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Um, I mean, he sent uh, four black men to be members of the Black uh, Black Panther Party of Self-Defense and it just destroyed it from the inside out. And yeah. that's, that, that, that is their MO. And so um, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, uh, and, and this is the same. I wouldn't. Actually, I said it's about Tariq Nasheed. I said Tariq Nasheed is an agent. That 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 Negro can't be that stupid. This thing you may also not... stage the whole Just, thing. I know. Yeah. I'm like, no, he can't. He can't act like this on you know uh, by on purpose. I mean, excuse me, he's doing it on purpose, but this is not what he really feel. Okay, with his white wife. All right. Okay. So it's like <laughs> so so I, I see the hypocrisy here, but everybody else don't see it. And, and the thing about it is, is that I, 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 I want it to stop and, and I want, and I am helping and I just want to bring awareness to the whole white self hatred thing and just put a self in, into it to anyone who promotes it to anyone and who encourages it. You, you don't like Black Lives Matter either, but you know, G G George Soros was a man who was funding Black Lives Matter. You know George Soros? George Soros absolutely funded do you Black know, Lives Do you know what he is? He's a Jew. Do you know what he is? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, let's talk about this real quick. Black Lives Matter was never in the best interest of black people or white people. So that's just like saying uh, George Soros funds Antifa, which he does. So it's, it, I don't, it, when, when you fund an organization who's against you anyway, eh, there's no big deal. But when, but when you get, when you want to say that innocent people who, who are like, like I said, my, the, the, the teachers of my, my, uh, German nephew, they are white Germans who are saying this. So I call, I hold them to be at blame 
for teaching that propaganda to their own people. When you want your own people to be demised, I blame you, not the person who put the money in your pocket. Well, I, I look at it too. Uh, you blame the teacher? Where, where's the root of this thinking? That that first needs to be no, found. Always no teacher the, has a power then, over my child. No teacher then, has a power over my child. And I, I, and I think white parents are too lenient because if they've I... Been, they've been suckered. They've been bamboozled. They've been fooled. And, then, and they think that then it's is their thing. fault. It's their fault Yeah, I mean, obviously they have to take responsibility. Obviously, everyone has to take responsibility for their actions. Yeah. But uh, that's why... Like I say, I think that this is a multi-tiered story here, and there's a lot of different facets that come come into play. I, I blame white people just like I blame black people. Black people are the reason why they're in the situation they're in, and same thing with white people. If you, I mean, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I no, mean, no, no. Go ahead. If you're taught as a, a child to hate yourself, is it the child's fault? No, because uh, here's the thing: did you may not know this about me? But I used to be a black supremacist. I was a member of the Nation of Islam. And that is that is a black supremacist, black nationalist organization. It's a very racist. I used to hate white people. Okay. And I was indoctrinated, not under my parents. I hate my parents too. I hate my parents. But once I wasn't indoctrinated underneath the Nation of Islam until I got out of my parents' house. Once I got out of their house, then that's when I was in, you know, basically converted into the nation of Islam and I stayed in there. And then I went to Sunni Islam and then I got the hell out of that too. So it's like, I went through that phase and I came out and you know what? I'm glad I went through that cycle because I'm like, I understand all aspects of this philosophy. And, and here's why I went to the Aryan nation members and I said, I can talk to them because I used to have that same mentality as thinking that my race is superior. And actually the nation of Islam taught, taught us that we created white people, that white people were made of part albino and part chimpanzee. Sure. Okay? I've heard this. Yeah. And yeah. so we had to destroy you. That's, that is a supremacist mentality. Now, obviously from this conversation, I don't think that at all. But I got out of it. How is it that I was intelligent enough to get out of that indoctrination, but other white people aren't and other black people aren't? See, I well, blame myself for everything going through that. I, bl I am the reason why I got indoctrinated. I had that mentality and IQ level to fall for the okie doke. Now, as I begin to study, as I begin to, to read, I'm not in that mentality anymore. And therefore, I'm what people say, red peeled. So therefore, I'm like, hey, I went through that and I got out. What's your and excuse? You and you probably had a few people along the way that helped you out or nudged yes. you or inspired yes. you. And that, that's a, another key part. But it's funny you mentioned Islam and supremacy, but you have the same side of the other Semites. There is a, you know, Jewish su supremacist religion as well as they're, they're the, the chosenites, right? They're the chosen ones, you know? So we're dealing with all kinds of uh, supremacists around us. And I don't think it's white people that are the ones. And no, no, no. Everybody honestly. has their supremacists, okay? Islam, Mus Arabs, blacks, whites, we all have it. But my thing is, if you stay under it after having people come to you trying to, like I said, you're absolutely right, Lana. People have come to me and they gave me logic and reason. And they actually challenged my, they challenged my belief system. I have done the same thing to Germans. I have done the same thing to white Americans and they still want to stay dumb. So you know what? It's their fault. It's their fault. Not the Jews. It's their fault. For staying yeah, stupid. I know it is. I know, but you didn't. You didn't grow up uh, being told about the Holocaust that your mommy and daddy were behind. You know, no, I wasn't. Jews, no. and you know, you I mean it's it's pretty hardcore propaganda there happening. So, but I mean, I think more people are going to come come out of it. It ain't over yet. It's just beginning, <laughs> really. I mean, it's just beginning. <laughs> so a lot of those people haven't heard us yet. They have to hear the voice of truth to be able to break through, to break through. You know, I know when I first started hearing some of these concepts, it was like, oh, the, the truth sets you free, you know, and we need to be able to be that truth and have people hear us. So it's a matter of getting out there and reaching those people. How do you reach people um, 
white people who are not interested? Well, they just kind of come and find us in different ways. I ask people all the time and they come in, in numerous different ways. So I don't know, it's a little serendipity, I guess. But it, it helps when people share, share with their family and their friends and get it out there. I mean, that's... So that's, you guys don't have an outreach program or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> like how a church would have or something, like yeah. proselytizing. Maybe we should start going door to door or yeah. something. <laughs> Hello, hello, ma'am. My name is Lana. I'm here with the odd right. Have you? Have yeah. You... <laughs> Do you know that anti-racist is a code word for anti-white? <laughs> maybe, maybe he's going to come down to that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw the visual. It's okay. That's it's why good. I was laughing. I was like, I actually saw you knocking on somebody's door saying just that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Oh god. So do you, anything else you want to touch on? <laughs> I think I think that's it for now. It's it's been a blast. It this actually was a blast. <laughs> this actually was a blast. So thank you so much. Hold on for a second. All right, guys. So as you can say, that was an awesome, awesome discussion we had. Um, I hope you all uh took a lot from it. Uh I'm sure a lot of liberals are triggered and going Wee! at the moment but um you'll get over it and if you don't like it get off my channel so how about that so anyway i want to thank again uh lana for coming by and um talking with me having this wonderful lively discussion and uh, i look forward to talking to you again in the future okay be sure mm -hmm. to be sure to check out um the website uh, redice.tv red yeah, TV. yeah. And as you guys can see, I have the information. I'm also going to have her information available uh, in the description box below. All right. Later, taters. Bye, guys.